ah, looks like my suspicions about the Heart Kingdom may be starting to loom closer. All my my belief that we're going to be heading there soon. It was between the Heart Kingdom and the Diamond Kingdom that I had the strong suspicions going to next. The Heart Kingdom was specifically because of my theory about Asta getting a mount and the fact that we have... The Speed Kingdom seemingly being the strongest out of the other three, really out of the four, um, but the Diamond Kingdom has a lot of potential to be that kind of end one because we know the level of buildup it already has, we know they're desperate and they got a lot of like human experiments going on. The Heart Kingdom, you know, left up to be a mystery and to be even mysterious to them had potential of either we could go there, find out some stuff, and uh, and figure out where this could tie into the story. The reason it being more mysterious, it could also tie into like, oh, we we don't know what we're getting into. Whereas going into something like the the Diamond Kingdom would really just end up in another war. I mean, with, with the Heart Kingdom, there's a lot you could mess around with before any crazy action and battle start. Whereas like the Diamond Kingdom, the thing you the Diamond Kingdom stuff's gonna get a little wild because we know that they're trying to uh, take back control, because Morris is pretty much controlling the country with uh, with all his lead points of uh, human experimentation. And once we get to that part, like it's going to be just a big entire kingdom-like coup d'etat, rebellion, overthrowing. It's going to be wild stuff. But for now, I think we're going to be getting ready for the Heart Kingdom. But for the chapter itself, we end up you know, going to see Gordon's family, because Gordon, who, you know, talked about curses obviously he's got his voodoo stuff but we didn't know a lot about it we don't know a lot about the families that each of the characters tied to we know about stuff like noel's family we know about finral's family but here's gordon you know, gordon obviously being probably the the least acknowledged member of the black bulls because even when you look at some of the members that haven't gotten a ton of spotlight like henry got a lot of spotlight in the elf resurrection arc uh, Gray got a pretty considerable amount of uh, of her own chapter in uh, in the Water Temple, and obviously that was a while ago. But Gordon, the 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 full amount that Gordon's gotten was in the Elf Resurrection arc when him and uh, him and Gray were coming out of their shells to try and you know they they had to protect the Black Hole base and they had a lot going on. But that was really it for him. That, that's all we really got for his character. But now we're we're going to see his family because. He wants to try and talk to them about, you know, helping with, uh, helping with knowledge about curses, forbidden magic. Because now we're trying to figure all this out uh, before the Black Bull exiled and until they need to search for information to help prove the case. And they even talk about, uh, at one point, Megicula, which I'm very curious about. Because this means that they have information on the character. Unfortunately, we didn't get back to, we didn't see anything really with Noel and Dorothy this chapter. But I think we still got a lot really to go off of. And there was one thing that got revealed that, you know, if it is completely substantial, then it, I got to, you know, give credit where credit is due. Talk about that in a minute when we get there. But Gordon, I guess he, he he's really kind of like steered away from his family. He didn't really want to contact them because he's, he says he's pretty much abandoned them. And, you know, he doesn't really want to converse with them because of it. And when they end up going to the house... It's like this creepy old mansion. It, it, it's like the, the house from the new It movies. Like, uh, this broken down. Really really nice, probably looking, if it was, like, sunny and there were actual leaves on the trees. And it wasn't looking so kind of old and decrepit. But this, you know, barren trees with crows everywhere. It's dark out. It's spooky. And everyone that, like, went is just like, we probably should go in there. But, you know, whatever. They open the door and here's this Adams Family looking group. Uh, of of the Prius, and you have uh, the father Nathan. You know he just pretty much just Gordon with uh, a little beard and a mustache, and you know, the the mother. He's got the he's got a sister, and a grandma, and I laugh because one of the things that I will always like kind of like think about is if I don't know what somebody's like family looks like. And they just like, oh yeah, I got these. I just imagined them, but like slightly different. Like when you get in like a cartoon, uh, what was it like a Family Guy? Like what was it the name? Uh, Mort? Or like his wife and his son looked exactly the same. Obviously his son's gonna look the same, but it's like, how does your wife look exactly the same? 
I think this is backed up because I knew somebody in real life who it was like him and his wife looked kind of like this, where they they looked very similar. Obviously, they weren't related, but I always thought that was just kind of amusing because it just reminded me of you know a cartoon. I guess they found each other, but at the same time, it, it just kind of like furthered my suspicion. So like in this case, like if, if we were described earlier in the series, like Gordon's like, oh yeah, I got uh, I got a grandma. Uh, you know, my two parents and my sister, I would just imagine them like this. I just imagine Gordon with like slightly different outfits. But like even the characters know that they're the same and they get a dog that has like I guess that the dog you can't really say like they look the same. It's just got the little eyeball uh kind of like eye spots, like little black rings. And rings is black spots on them, kinda of like where Gordon's eyes are. But I think that, I don't know what the type of dog that is, but that's actually what the dog looks like, the breed. Was it the the Spuds McKenzie dog? But well, they're, you know, they're over, they're eating. Asa's pretty happy because he's like, even though the food looks bad, it's really good. <laughs> he's like super excited about his chill. Nero's just sitting there on on his head as a bird. Not really, uh, don't really know how to take in the situation. Kind of awkward now as well that now that we know, uh, now that we know the fact that Nero, what she actually looks like, and actually just wants to turn into a bird and sit on top of Asa. I wonder what his opinion of that is. I wonder what his opinion It's like, yeah, you can, uh, I guess you can still keep sitting on my head, but you know, whatever, whatever. So, and then the, the comment from the grandma is what made me really interested because she even mentions Magicula. So that means that they know more about Magicula than we, we can currently have. We, we got a name drop at the end of the last chapter from Dorothy, but not only that, here we have this old lady who straight seems to know information about him. So I'm wondering if she's going to give anything further by the end of this chapter. And actually, uh, one thing I really liked was uh, well, the the fact that while talking about it, you know, you got to think like, well, Gordon Gordon doesn't know a lot about his family. You know, what is the reason for that? You know, he grew up with them. And then it was kind of like partially revealed the reason for that was, as you know, they mumble, you know, the, the way that Gordon talks. He just kind of, he, he just talks at very low volume. You know, he, he kind of just like makes it so people can barely hear him. So the family members could barely understand even each other, which makes sense. Like if you have like this whole group of people who are constantly just barely speaking at a hearable like level of volume, you're probably not going to understand a lot what they say. And Gordon, you know, finally, you know, working up the courage, talked to his family, confronts them. He says, you know, I, I want help finding information on curses and demons. You know, we got stuff we need to do we need, and you have information that I, uh, I'd like to get. And, you know, the father, Nathan, he's just like, all right. Okay, you know, I'll, I'll help you, but, you know, be prepared to see what you're going to see. He opens a room, and there's just, like, organs laying around. You got, like, skulls and, like, weird-looking creatures, like, mounted on the wall. Some are, like, dead and hanging. It just looks like some, like, murder scene, like, scientist as he's, like, trying to build some experiment. Like, this would probably would lead up to something like the Frankenstein's monster or something. Like, well, if I'd stitch them all together, it'll make something better. Something ridiculous like that crazy but essentially like the way it's described is he's he's actually kind of like a doctor he, he's more of like healing and obviously when when it came to much older age types of medicine they had to do a lot of like darker experiments to find out what healed people what made things better what caused illnesses obviously it's like well this guy's uh before they knew anything about like brain tumors and stuff you know somebody died you had to cut up with their skull and obviously it's gonna be real graphic the scene like oh yeah this you know you see parts of the brain that are all messed up and you're able to deduce like whatever it was you know it, it was destroying their brain and you know stuff like that or hearts or you know whatever diseases you look at someone's liver or like pancreas or you just internal parts you know it, it, there's a lot of more of a gruesome process than you think just like watching like an episode of scrubs or something but then he uses his uh his black oil magic which get black oil just it further goes into this like they have this design where it just reminds me of uh, of some like 18th century European place or something just like bloodborne style like design of all of them, especially the father. And I like that this the black oil was in there as well. And I just imagine black oil lamps when I think of like how creepy this place is. But he ends up like kind of like scraping Asta. He, he doesn't end up hurting him at all. It looks like it's gonna hurt him. He seems pretty powerful to be perfectly honest. Like. He goes in for the attack. Asta, obviously, you no, know, he's in his base form. He should be pretty considerable, the fact he was able to get an attack in on Asta. 
know, get got like power, like, not like power. He extracted like a little bit of him, and he talks about how he can use it now to to, to kind of like lay out and assess the situation, trying to like use the the curse that was within him. Not really the curse, the demonic aspect of him to really kind of like use one of his spells because he he lays out like this big layer of uh of oil and it ends up showing like a map and he's like any of these lights are areas touched by demons or things like with their influence one of them one of them i said was in the black bull's hideout um yeah because they're they're all like little candles i thought was really cool and you know any of the candle locations oh, okay cool this is where you know some demon influences and one of them is henry which makes sense and I was kind of like against the idea, uh, just because I, I don't know, I thought it would be a little bit too much to have too many cursed characters, but then we found out that the demons are, you know, as Dorothy said, crawling through the shadows of the world. So they're influencing a lot more than we know. It just depends on the level of severity that they're affecting. In some places probably it's like, oh yeah, they, they talk to somebody once, maybe give them like a small curse. That doesn't really do a whole lot, but maybe it's just kind of like to, to mess around or to kind of like get a strategy going. Whereas obviously Henry's is much more severe because his affects people around him and could kill him in the process. So, you know, whoever whoever thought like, well, maybe Henry is cursed as well, and then I've you know, got that going. Good for them. I, I, I will admit I did not uh, I didn't really jump on board with this, but if this is the case, then this is the case. But but I will say, you know, the, my suspicions of the Heart Kingdom look to be going well because they say at the end of the chapter like in the harking there's a giant like flame indicating like a huge demon probably is present a huge demon doing their own things i don't i wonder if that's Megicula. i mean obviously like that's the demon we're talking about now so we will, you know if that's the demon we go to next it would make sense but i'm i'm curious to know it'd be like well then what's the demon doing over in this other country what's the story of this I'm still hoping that, you know, while going to Heart Kingdom, you know, Asta finds some form of mount, and we get some form of sick Asta anti-magic mount to look like Nosferatu Zod from Berserk. Please, Tabata, please, come on, come on, man, need this. But, Heart Kingdom, I'm guessing we're going next. You know, find out some information there, you know, it's all secretive, we get, like, a lot of, like, new fun characters. The fact they're neutral should also, like, it, it should be easier to get there. And then maybe we find out, like, aspects about them that are a lot more constricted, a lot more just kind of, like, held down and well-kept. Maybe some aspects of their culture, maybe some of the, the secrets of how they operate. I'm very curious to know how that'll be, because the fact we're finally leaving the country is going to be really... Uh, it just really, like, both world-building, but also we know that the kingdoms are very different. And this is a kingdom that's different that they don't really know anything about. So we're going in this fairly blind. So look forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. I am, again, I'm hoping my guess about the, the Heart Kingdom being more of like buff, like familiar summoner kind of characters that are buffing up their, uh, buffing up their creatures. And Austin gets them out. Come on, Austin needs them out. He doesn't, he can't ride a broom. He's got nothing to get around. He has to always like mooch off somebody else. Do that car. Maybe instead he'd get a motorcycle. I mean, I guess that wouldn't really be a good uh, comparison. But, you know what I mean. Also getting something. Some form of animal that he could ride would be perfectly useful. Plus, like, think about it. You'd have Asta on an animal and then Nero on Asta. So you just got, like, triple ride. I guess it'd be double ride. But you know what I mean. So comment below. Tell me what you thought about this chapter. I actually, like, when I read some of the spoilers, like, I didn't, like, I, I saw some, like, oh, yeah, they're going to talk about demons and stuff. You know, there, there's a little bit in there. I was really intrigued to see the Gordon's family. I really wanted to see what they're like. And we got this Adam's family-esque group, which was fun. This Bloodborne-style, like, place. So pretty, pretty intrigued to see. It makes me wonder, like, some of the other families. Like, what is Gray's family going to do? What are we going to find out about, uh, what are we going to finally see someone like, um, what are we going to see someone like Zora? Well, I was, was going to say Zora's family, and I'm like, wait, 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 that's part of Zora's backstory. He only has his dad, his dad is dead. Uh, oh, let's, let's, let's not pull up sadness. Actually, we've gotten a fair amount of the background family. We've got no wells. I mean, with some of them would, like have nothing really going on for them. Like Luck, nobody, Vanessa, her mom's out of the picture. 
I think Gray. I mean, really, like, Gray, we could find out some more about Gray's family. Yami's family probably still exists somewhere. They're probably just like, man, what happened to our son from, like, 12 years ago or however many years ago it was? But, like I said, comment below and uh, thumbs up the video. Put the like button and subscribe button and check out my other videos. I appreciate everybody's already subscribed. I thank you all for listening. Bye.